little secret about me, I don't know how to cook. But with Blue Apron, not only do I feel like I can, I'm really learning how. Blue Apron delivers fresh ingredients right to your door with your choice of easy to follow recipes. I made these tacos one time and mm, scrumptious. You won't just be making burgers, you'll be making chili butter steaks with lemon parmesan broccoli and you can whip this stuff up in under 45 minutes. It was such a great feeling making delicious food myself that I want you to try it too. Blue Apron is treating ScrewTac Top 10 listeners to their first three meals, a $30 value, with your first order if you visit blueapron.com slash top 10. So check out this week's menu and get your $30 off with free shipping at blueapron.com slash top 10. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. I remember the first time I ever saw a Dragon Ball fight. It was that moment when Goku demolished Raccoon on Planet Namek, and from that moment on, I was hooked on the Dragon Ball series. Truth is, fights are such a big part of what makes the Dragon Ball franchise so memorable, and talking about them here at the office, we got to thinking, hey, we should probably show you guys the 10 best fights in the whole series. But we're not gonna count Super, because that show's not done yet, and also that could be a top 10 in and of itself. So hey, I'm Nervous Nick for Screw Attack's top 10 Dragon Ball fights. Number 10. Some Dragon Ball fights, not all, but some, fall into a predictable pattern. Step one, try to beat the bad guy. Step two, fail to beat the bad guy. Step three, Goku shows up and beats the bad guy anyway. What's cool about the first fight against Broly is that it's everyone versus Broly. Goku, Piccolo, Trunks, and Gohan all carry their weight here. Don't get us wrong, we're putting it low on the list for a reason. Vegeta spends most of the fight crying, the solution still ends up being let Goku do his Goku thing, and we have no idea how five healthy warriors are less effective than one guy borrowing the strength of four wounded ones, but it's still a different dynamic than almost any other Dragon Ball fight, and we can respect it for that. Number nine. Speaking of Goku hogging the spotlight, poor Vegeta, man. Everybody seems to love this character, but it's so rare that he gets to really shine. If he had gotten his revenge against Golden Frieza, we would have put that way higher on this list. But since he got Goku'd, we'll have to settle for Vegeta's butt whooping on Android 19. For once, Goku got Goku'd by the Prince of All Saiyans thanks to a convenient heart virus, and Vegeta got to carry a moment all on his own. Not only was this the big reveal that Vegeta had figured out how to become a Super Saiyan, it was also the first time we got to see one of Vegeta's signature moves, the famous Big Bang Attack. It's really too bad Vegeta doesn't get more moments like this. Number 8 Not every fight has to be a close one to be worthy of being on this list. It's okay for some of them to be stomps as long as they're still entertaining. And you know what's entertaining? watching Nazis get their comeuppance at the hands of some Super Saiyan kids. In the DBZ movie Fusion Reborn, there's a side plot where Hitler and an army of Nazi zombies start driving their tanks through the city, so Goten and Trunks respect the crap out of their opinions with the Super Ghost Kamikaze attack. I never thought so much loss of life could be so beautiful. Number 7 Truth be told, this just barely even counts as a fight at all, but it's such a good moment that we'll sneak it onto the list anyway. By the time Cell had reached his semi-perfect form, whatever is up with that name, Tien had long since stopped being a relevant fighter. If you weren't a Saiyan, a robot, or at the very least a green alien, you were basically just bad guy fodder. Tien knew that, but he also didn't care. He used his patented tri-beam attack to pin down Cell and let Android 18 make her escape. Sure, he was pretty much just stalling for time here, but Tien's onslaught is just too awesome to ignore. By the way, has anybody else noticed how Tien uses his hands to make a triangle to shoot a circle that makes a square? How does that work? Number six. Everybody knows that Goku is constantly trying to push himself as a fighter. It's like one of his most defining traits. But that whole mentality goes back to one specific fight. The grand finals of the 21st World Martial Arts Tournament. The young Goku in training took on Master Ro <laughs> sorry, Jackie Chun, in a match that gave us the first ever beam struggle, Goku transforming into the Ozaru, and Jackie Chun blowing up the moon! But most importantly, after the most hard-fought battle of his life, Goku was at last declared the loser of the fight. And because he lost, he learned that there would always be somebody out there stronger than him, which only motivated him to push his own limits for the rest of his life. Yeah, it bummed him out for like five seconds, but then he ate like half a million zenny worth of food, so, you know, <laughs> life was good. Number five. Dragon Ball Z lets you know right away that stuff was gonna get real. 
In the lead up to DBZ's first major showdown, the body count had already piled up with some of your favorite characters from the last series. But it all came to a head when Goku went face to face with the Saiyan invader, Vegeta. You want screaming power ups? You got screaming power ups. You want beam struggles? You've got beam struggles. You want giant monkeys getting their tails cut off by Samurai Jack Black? Baby, you're covered. But most importantly, this was where the legendary Goku Vegeta rivalry that defined the rest of Dragon Ball was born. Though to be fair, I'd also want revenge for the rest of my life if I lost with a naked kid landing on me. Major props to Vegeta's publicist though, because if that leaked out in this day and age, <laughs> uh, he'd never see the end of it. Number four. For like 17 years, Dragon Ball had laid mostly dormant. Yeah, there was DBZ Kai and a couple OVAs, but nothing really earth shattering. Then, in 2013, the clouds parted and Akira Toriyama descended down on a beam of light where he blessed us, dear fellow Dragon Ball fans, with Goku vs. Beerus, the Battle of Gods. And we all proclaimed hallelujah! Unto us, a new Dragon Ball movie is born. I've officially taken this metaphor too far, but hey, technically this isn't Dragon Ball Super, so we're not breaking our rules here. This is hands down the most beautifully animated Dragon Ball fight on this entire list. Thanks to modern day animation techniques, there is a fluidity to Goku and Beerus' movements that we just didn't get in any other battle. And who here didn't get hyped when Goku screamed? I will not let you destroy my world! This fight wasn't just important because it meant more adventures for Goku in the game, it meant that we, as Dragon Ball fans, had something to get excited for again. Can I get an amen? Number three. If there's one thing that I don't like very much about most fights in DBZ onward, it's that everybody is like too good at fighting. What I mean here is every single character moves at such stupidly high speeds that a lot of the time they're barely even animated. Yeah, it's great for giving us a sense of the level they're fighting at and all, but there's something to be said about lower level fights too. Go back and watch Goku vs. Krillin in Dragon Ball's World Martial Arts Tournament and you'll see what I mean. Even though it aired way back in 1988, this fight still has some of the best animation and choreography in the entire Dragon Ball storyline. Like, look at this! It's so freaking good! On top of that, it's also just full of funny and clever moments that sort of went missing from the series for a long time. Goku using a Kamehameha to smack himself into Krillin? Gold. And for that, it's still one of Dragon Ball's very best. Number two. You all knew this was gonna be high on the list. Few fights in Dragon Ball were as definitive as Goku versus the alien tyrant Frieza. A couple important firsts happen here that forever changed the Dragon Ball story. For one thing, it's the first time an entire planet got caught in the crossfire of a battle, not to mention the unforgettable debut of the Super Saiyan. And that ending with Frieza, you know, splitting up, so to speak? Probably the most gruesome thing I had seen in a TV show the first time I saw that. The entire battle had this awesome sense of urgency with the planet Namek being torn asunder right around Goku and Frieza. That is, it felt urgent until about five episodes after Frieza said it'd be toast in five minutes. You just had to say 20 minutes, Frieza. 20 minutes or so, that would have been way more believable. It's number one. The entire saga of Dragon Ball could have ended nicely in a lot of places. As much fun as Super has been, part of me still wishes that the whole thing concluded at the number one fight in the entire franchise. The climactic battle of Gohan vs. Cell. Everybody who's seen this epic fight knows why it's so good. It's the big payoff after spending all of DBZ hinting at Gohan's hidden power. Cell poops out some babies, the babies hurt the good guys, and Gohan explodes and beats the crap out of Cell. We've said before that this whole fight was both exciting and emotional when it culminates in the single greatest moment of DBZ. The father-son Kamehameha. Oh man, this part gets me every time. You can't see it right now, but I got goosebumps. If goosebumps could be picked up on a mic, you'd hear them. Gohan vs. Cell raised the bar for Dragon Ball fights to a height that, in our opinion, still hasn't been topped. If Dragon Ball had ended there, yeah, we would have definitely been sad, but we would also have been satisfied. This episode's secret number 11 goes back to the OG Dragon Ball for Krillin vs. Jackie Chun. I seriously don't know how this disguise fooled anyone. Anyway, we love this fight for the moment when Krillin and Jackie do an attack so fast that nobody could see it, and then they spend three straight minutes explaining what happened. It's super silly, and we super love it. 